Hi, my name is Kieran Milne. I'm a tech lead with the Juniper Networks Certification Program in Education Services here at Juniper Networks. This Learning Byte is going to discuss OSPF version 2 adjacency formation for Junos devices. So OSPF adjacencies serve a few functions in a network. And the first is that they enable neighbor discovery. Imagine two OSPF routers on a, on a network segment. Uh, well, when you enable OSPF on a device, it begins sending hello messages every so often. And so each device on the segment sends out a hello message uh, onto the link, and the other device at the other end receives that hello message. And so that mechanism allows the devices on the network to discover each other, discover that they're there. Uh, OSPF devices send hellos out of every OSPF-enabled interface. And so as you can imagine, you know, this goes out through the network and, and all of the devices begin to discover each other and discover that they're there. A related item, uh, this mechanism also maintains awareness throughout the network as well. So these same hello uh, messages that get sent out, you know, if uh, each device receives the neighboring hello messages and as it keeps receiving those messages over time, it maintains awareness that its neighbors are still there and the network is still, uh, you know, as it is. Uh, and so a third related item is the detection of, uh, of failures. So, you know, neighbor failure detection. When any device stops receiving hello messages, uh, after a certain number of missed messages, it determines that something has happened to that neighbor. It's gone or it's down or uh, something has happened to it that's not good. And so uh, a given device can take it out of the network or, or remove its awareness of that device and recalculate the paths through the network based on the absence of that device. And then the fourth item, the, you know, the, the ultimate goal of OSPF adjacencies is to allow the neighboring devices to exchange actual routing information through the network. So sharing uh, networks and prefixes to neighboring devices and, and you know, pushing routing information throughout the OSPF network. Now, generally, generally speaking, all OSPF routers in a network will become fully adjacent with one another. Now, there is one exception to that, and it's uh, in the case of broadcast or uh, non-broadcast multi-access networks, when uh, a connection is formed between a non-designated router or non-backup designated router devices, those particular connections don't become fully adjacent. Uh, that's a bit beyond the scope of this learning byte, and it will, in fact, be the topic of a separate learning byte. You can get uh, very detailed information on adjacency formation in RFC 2328, the official OSPF v2 spec, and you can see the link to it there. So let's take a look at a high-level example of uh, how two routers will form an adjacency with one another. So we've got our R1 and R2 in the middle here, and you can see what looks like a bit of a handshake mechanism going back and forth, and we'll run through that here in just a minute. On the right-hand side, you can see a listing of the OSPF packet types, all five of them there, and they, they basically map up with about where they are used uh, within this whole handshake process. Uh, on the left side, you can see that this whole process is broken into, you could say, two phases. The first phase is going to be neighborship establishment, and the second will be adjacency formation. So let's walk through this here and see what happens. Uh, note that this is going to be, you know, relatively high level. Uh, if you want more detail and depth, you can certainly check out the RFC and uh, get very detailed information on, on this exchange. So we start with both routers in the, essentially the down position. They're not running OSPF. Now, as you enable OSPF on each router, they're going to start sending hello packets. Uh, and as they send them out, what's inevitably going to happen is each router is going to receive a hello from the other router and it will switch to init state. So init state essentially says, I have received a hello from you, I see that you're there, and I'm announcing again that I am here, and I'm announcing a hello out to you. And so once both devices receive that particular message, so once they receive a message that says from their neighbor that they saw a hello come into them, and they are acknowledging it back, once both devices do that, they switch into what's called two-way state. And that establishes neighborship between these two devices. They have met on some basic parameters and agreed, uh, and they become OSPF neighbors. With that established, they can carry on to the adjacency formation portion of, of the handshake here. And they move into what's called X start state. Uh, 
Now, this is about negotiating who's essentially going to lead or be the master for the exchange of OSPF database information between these routers. And they start using database description packets to do this. And once they've established who is master, they move into the next state, which is called exchange state. Now, as you can imagine, this is the actual exchanging of routing information between these two devices. So this uses a combination of database description packets to announce, uh, I guess, a short form of the, what, uh, what each device knows to its neighbor, and then a combination of database description packets, and then the other packets there, the link state request, link state update, and link state acknowledgement packets all begin to work in combination whether it be to share uh, a brief view of the OSPF database, or perhaps uh, one device uh, discovers that it has some information already, but it's not fully up to date. It needs a, a refresh of a particular piece of information. It can make requests and, and updates can be sent back and forth. And so all those packet types work together. Once the full exchange is, is complete and a device uh, is fully, uh, you know, fully has all of the information that it needs about the neighboring device's routing information, it moves into full state. It becomes what's called fully adjacent and it is set to go. Once both routers do that, they are both considered fully adjacent and this adjacency formation comes up as full. You will see it in the CLI shortly uh, and it will say full to indicate that uh, things are in good shape, the routing databases are exchanged and this is, you know, this adjacency is fully ready to go. Now one note you see in gray there, the word loading. Now as you might be able to imagine, you know, it's not necessarily true that the routers will exactly synchronize when they receive all of the information from the neighboring device. Uh, one device might finish before the other one. So in this case here is an example where uh, R1 has sent all of its information over to R2 and R2 is full. However, R1 is still receiving or requesting, you know, some information from R2 to become fully adjacent, but it's not quite there yet. And so it moves into this temporary state called loading. And that's no problem. It simply finishes receiving the information that it needs, uh, becomes fully synchronized, and then it moves also to full state. Okay, so let's take a look at how this works uh, on actual Junos equipment. Our simple demo lab setup here consists of two routers, R1 and R2, in uh, area zero, and that's really all there is to it. So let's take a look at this. All right, so we're into our lab environment here, and let's just take a look at what's going on first of all. You're looking at R1 here, and it has an OSPF configuration, as you can see. A couple of things to note. First of all, just a single area zero, like we said, and one interface pointing pointing to the neighbor router, R2. And we also have a trace options file with a couple flags selected here that'll help us view what's going on in just a minute. Very, uh, oh, there happens to be uh, an export policy sitting here as well. It just happens to be here. Over on R2, pretty much the identical, identical configuration, area zero, one interface pointing over to R1, and a trace options file as well. So let's just get set up here to do what we need to do. One other thing I'll show you just real quickly is um, is the neighborship. You can see there's our neighborship up right now and fully established and similarly on R2. So things are fully established. Now we're going to change that here in just a minute. Let me just clear our log first of all, our trace options log. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear one of the neighbors here. So this is going to eliminate our neighborship and make the two uh, the two routers reestablish their uh, their adjacency. Pretty straightforward. So let me just call up the log here again, and we'll see what happened. So trace options files uh, aren't always the most clear to read. You, you kind of have to dig into uh, a fair bit of all the details and the parameters, but. You know, I'll, I'll uh, kind of go through it at a high level here, and you're welcome to pause the video and, and look into things more closely if you like. But we should see pretty quickly some things that are of interest here. The first thing, if we go right on our first line, we were in full adjacency state, as you recall, and changed to the down state due, due to something called kill neighbor. And you can see the reason is, well, the command, a clear command was issued to, to reset this adjacency, and that's simply the reason for it. If we move down a little bit further here, you can see down moved to init due to something called hello received. And you can see, like we were talking about on the previous slide, you know, we switch from uh, 
down up to init as hello messages start transferring back and forth between the neighbors. And to that point, you can see init here moves to jumps right through to X start due to it says two way received. So that means that the init state moved right on through the two way state as the two neighbors detected each other uh, and proceeded on to the next state into X start state. You can see that if we move a little further down, the device moves from X start into exchange due to something called negotiation done or negotiation done. And you can see it mentions here that that master negotiation of who's going to control the exchange uh, has been completed. And so off we go into, into uh, exchange state. And you can see in this case, exchange into full state due to exchange done. So we, we see very clearly that we've moved through the whole process. Um, you know, from the initial full state, we reset the connection, and we're back to full state again by walking through the, the adjacency uh, process for the two devices. Let's flip over to R2 and just have a quick look there as well. Things should look pretty similar here. One detail or one difference here is you can see we go to full, uh, sorry, from full to init due to something called one-way received. Now this is a little bit of a um, kind of a middle ground uh, state that uh, is a little bit behind the scenes. So we went from full here to down, we got reset, and up to init. The one we received means that from our neighboring router, they sent that, uh, that hello message where they have seen us, but we haven't seen them yet here on this device. And so the state is called one way received, and we will carry on from there. And if we look to the next uh, line item, you can see it here. So we've moved from init to X start due to two-way received. So you can see we've kind of moved through the process from init to two-way and right into X start. And so things carry on from there. Move a little further down, you can see X start to exchange and exchange to full due to exchange done. So we're all set. There are the two routers uh, in play. Uh, you happen not to see some of the other details like um, database description packets or uh, um, link state updates and link state acknowledgements and link state requests happening uh, that happens not to be going on here because there isn't much with these two devices to share. Um, so it's pretty brief as we've seen it, but uh, this gives you a good overview of, uh, you know, forming adjacencies between, uh, uh, OSPF adjacencies that is, between two, OF neighbor, two OSPF neighbors. So that completes this learning bite on OSPF version 2 adjacency formation. Hope you uh, enjoyed it and learned something from it. Uh, have a good one, and we'll catch you next time. Bye for now. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology-specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.